morning, everybody. It is the beginning of a brand new week. That's right. It is Monday. And I'm going to call today mm -mm, Good Monday, which means I'm going to be serving up a bunch of treats for you. Literary treats and song treats. So let's get started. It's story time and I'm Sophie. So let's get going. Okay. This is my beloved Shel Silverstein, Where the Sidewalk Ends, and I'd love to share a story from you, from him, with you, and it's called Spaghetti. Who likes spaghetti? I like spaghetti. Spaghetti, spaghetti, all over the place, up to my elbows, up to my face, over the carpets and under the chairs, into the hammock and wound round the stairs, filling the bathtub and covering the deck, making my sofa a mad, mushy mess. The party is ruined. I'm terribly worried. The guests have all left, unless they're all buried. I told them bring presents. I said, throw confetti. I guess they heard wrong, because they all threw spaghetti. <laughs> Isn't that fun? I like that. Spaghetti. Mm. I don't know. Throwing spaghetti could be a pretty funny, crazy scene, don't you think? I just realized I forgot to put my microphone on. So here, let me just clip this on real quick, you guys. And we'll get started with our good morning song. Get ready to say hello. Okay, here we go. Oh, hello. How are you? Oh, hello. How are you? Oh, hello. How are you? I'm just fine today. I'm glad to see you here today. I'm glad to see you here today. I'm glad to see you here today. I'm so glad to see you. Okay, let's get our day started by stretching really tall. Stretch, stretch, stretch as tall as you can and stretch, stretch, stretch as tall as you can. Stretch, stretch, stretch as tall as you can. I'm so glad to see you. Okay, so let's reach up to the sky, shall we? Reach, reach, reach up to the sky and reach, reach, reach up to the sky. Reach, reach, reach up to the sky. I'm so glad to see you. Okay, can we bend down and touch our toes? That's it. Bend right down and touch your toes and bend right down and touch your toes. Bend right down and touch your toes. I'm so glad to see you. Very, very good. Okay, what do you say we jump up and down? Let's jump. Jump, jump, jump as fast as you can and jump, jump, jump as fast as you can and jump, jump, jump as fast as you can. I'm so glad to see you. Okay, let's do my favorite and then get the day started, shall we? Wake up on your face, as funny as you can, and da 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 As you clap, wake up on your face, as funny as you can. I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> All right, let's wave hello, shall we? Hello, how are you? Oh, hello. How are you? Oh, hello. How are you? I'm just fine today. Hello everybody and good morning. I am Sophie and thank you for inviting me into your abode or your device or wherever you happen to be watching today. It's so much fun to be here. And Sparky's here too. Say hello Sparky. Sparky's a sloth so he's rather slow. But let's get started shall we? Okay when I was a little girl I used to love this story. It's called The Gingerbread Man. And if you notice, it's by Shelby. It's by Richard Scarry. And Richard Scarry has so many wonderful books. And I'll be sharing one of those with you on Wednesday, actually, thanks to my friend Shelby, who sent me an amazing book by Richard Scarry. And this is called The Gingerbread Man, Richard Scarry's version. And there you can see there is a old lady and she's got a gingerbread man. And this says it's retold by Nancy Nolte. Oh, okay, Nancy. Um, so one thing I want to tell you, when I was a little girl, 
I used to be a puppeteer. That's right. I used to work with my aunt who had a puppet theater and I was a puppeteer. And the very first show that I ever did by myself was The Gingerbread Man. And I always loved being The Gingerbread Man. So this is Richard Scarry's The Gingerbread Man, retold by Nancy Nolte. I'll show you that picture one more time. Once upon a time, there was a little old man and a little old woman, and they lived in a neat little house in the woods. That is a neat little house, isn't it? I've always loved hatches, houses with thatched roofs. Every day, the little old woman baked wonderful cookies and cakes and pies for the little old man. One day, she decided to bake something special for him. Looks like the cat's very interested in uh, what's on the table. Maybe there's some milk up there. So she made a beautiful gingerbread man. He had raisins for eyes and a currant for a nose and pink sugar candy waistcoat. A waistcoat is like a vest. It's an old word. She popped him into the oven to bake and when he was done, the little old woman took him out of the oven laid him on the table to cool, and went out in the yard to water the flowers. She has a very busy life, doesn't she? As soon as she was out of sight, the gingerbread man sat up on the table, and seeing that no one was around, he climbed down and ran out the door and away down the path. Oh my goodness, there he goes. See his little pink waistcoat? He has some very nice hair, doesn't he? The little old woman and the little old man saw him. Oh, stop! Stop! They cried. But the gingerbread man only laughed and called over his shoulder. Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm a gingerbread man. <laughs> and with that, he ran even faster, with the little old woman and the little old man running behind him. Oh, my goodness, look. So there they are running, and let, let's take a peek at the little gingerbread man. Look at the chickens. The chickens are like, hmm, he might be very tasty. When a gentle brown cow saw the gingerbread man running down the road, she thought how good he would taste. So she cried after him, stop, stop. But the gingerbread man only laughed. Run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm a gingerbread man. I ran away from a little old woman and a little old man, and I can run away from you too. I can, I can. <laughs> and he ran faster than ever with the little old woman, the little old man, and the gentle brown cow after him. Then he saw a big brown bear eating honey from a tree, and he knew that he would have to run even faster. When the bear smelled that wonderful gingery smell, he thought how good that gingerbread boy would taste with his honey. And so the bear cried, stop, stop. But the gingerbread man drew a deep breath and laughed and cried out, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm a gingerbread man. I ran away from a little old woman, a little old man, gentle brown cow, and I can run away from you too. I can, I can. <laughs> Truth be told, I think they should just eat him because he's annoyingly loud. And on he ran, the little old woman, the little old man, and the gentle brown cow, and the big brown bear, all running after him. At last, the gingerbread man saw a river before him, and he did not know how he was going to cross it. But a wily red fox was sitting near the river, and when he saw the gingerbread man, he decided that he would eat him. Water and gingerbread don't mix very well. It's kind of like, like milk and gingerbread. It would basically dissolve the gingerbread boy, so he knows that he doesn't want to get his feet wet. As the gingerbread man ran up to the river's edge, the wily red fox came out to meet him. Oh, jump on my tail and I will carry you across the river, he called to the gingerbread man. 
If I do, you will eat me, said the gingerbread man. Oh, no, declared the fox. I don't like gingerbread. Hmm, who doesn't like gingerbread? So the gingerbread man jumped on the fox's tail and the fox waded into the river. But soon the water grew so deep that it lapped about the toes of the little gingerbread man. Oh, fox, he said, I'm getting wet. Jump on my back, cried the wily red fox. The gingerbread man jumped on the fox's back, but again the water started to lap around the gingerbread man's feet. Fox, he said, I'm getting wet. Look at everybody on the shore looking after that red fox. I think they know what's about to happen. Do you? Oh, jump on my head, cried the fox. The gingerbread man jumped on the fox's head, but the water was soon creeping up. Here, let me show you this picture first. He looks very worried, doesn't he? Jump on my nose, said the wily red fox. The gingerbread man jumped on the fox's nose and snip, snap. The fox gobbled him up. And that is just what should happen to all gingerbread men. <laughs> and look at that little fox. He looks very pleased with himself. But remember, Gingerbread men are meant to be eaten. That's why we bake them. We do not bake them so that they run away. Now, I have a, a song for you about uh, cookies, and it goes like this. Who took the cookie from the cookie jar? Who took the cookie from the cookie jar? Who took the cookie from the cookie jar? Tell me who can it be? Was it Ollie? Ollie, did you take the cookie from the cookie jar? Did Ollie take the cookie from the cookie jar? Did Ollie take the cookie from the cookie jar? Did Ollie take the cookie from the cookie jar? Tell me, Ollie, honestly. Oh, Ollie says no. Hmm. Who took the cookie from the cookie jar? Who took the cookie from the cookie jar? Who took the cookie from the cookie jar? Tell me who can it be? Mm, I know. Did Alfie take the cookie from the cookie jar? Did Alfie take the cookie from the cookie jar? Did Alfie take the cookie from the cookie jar? Did Alfie take the cookie from the cookie jar? Tell me, Alfie, honestly. Mm. Alfie says no, he'd prefer ice cream. Mm, Sparky, who else? Oh, I know. Did Frangelica take the cookie from the cookie jar? Did Frangelica take the cookie from the cookie jar? Did Frangelica take the cookie from the cookie jar? Frangelica, tell me honestly. Oh, no. Frangelica said she would rather have a dog biscuit. Mmm. Who took the cookie from the cookie jar? Who took the cookie from the cookie jar? From the cookie jar. Tell me who can it be? What's that, Sparky? Me? No, Spark, me? Sparky's saying maybe I took the cookie from the cookie jar. Did Sophie take the cookie from the cookie jar? Did Sophie take the cookie from the cookie jar? Did Sophie take the cookie from the cookie jar? Tell me, Sophie, honestly. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, since I'm asking myself, I guess I got to tell the truth. I took the cookie from the cookie jar. Yes, I took the cookie from the cookie jar. I took the cookie from the cookie jar. It was tasty as could be. But don't worry, I'm going to bake up another batch and everybody can have one. 
but I'm going to make sure they're not gingerbread because I don't want them to go running away on me. All right, I have another story. And this one, I have to thank my dear friends Gabriella and Lillian and Rosanna. It's called, If You Give a Dog a Donut. And if you have been watching my story hours, you probably have seen if you give a moose a muffin, if you give a mouse a cookie, and if you give a pig a pancake, because this is another of their versions. And this is called, If You Give a Dog a Donut. Hmm. I wonder if they're going to write if you give sloth spaghetti. That would be a good one. Don't you think, Sparky? Hmm. Okay. This is written by Laura Numeroff with illustrations by Felicia Bond. So there it is. If you give a dog a donut. Hmm. If you give a dog a donut. Written by Laura Numeroff with illustrations by Felicia Bond. Now, if you look at that doggy, he seems to have his own dog bowl, which means he's up and ready for something to eat. If you give a dog a donut, oh, look, he's jumping for that donut. He'll ask for some apple juice to go with it. Apple juice and donuts. I've never had apple juice with donuts. And when you give him the juice, he'll drink it all up. As all good puppies should. And then he'll ask for more. But there won't be any left. And so he'll want to make his own. And he'll go outside to pick apples. Oh, look, he took the basket from the laundry. Oh, dear, now there's laundry everywhere. Who knew that doggies could skateboard, huh? And when he's up in the tree, he'll toss you one. And throwing the apple will make him think of baseball. And he'll want to play. So you'll have to get a ball and a glove. And of course, he'll also need a bat. Here, take a peek at that. Do you see a bat? I see a lot of toys there. Yeah, I think it took a while to find that bat. And then he'll ask you to pitch. Oop, oh dear. Hmm, we had a little bit of a squiggly wiggly there. There we go. There, can you see him pitching? Sorry about that, a little bit of focus problem. And he'll hit a home run, woohoo! He must be a very strong doggy. And then he'll do a happy dance to celebrate. I would do a happy dance to celebrate too. Look at that, he's got some significant dance moves. And dancing will make him hot and dusty. So he'll need some water and he'll probably start a water fight and then you'll have to dry him off with your bandana. And he'll wrap it around his head and he'll pretend that he's a pirate. Here, let me show you that picture because that's pretty funny. Arr. I like pretending to be a pirate. And then he'll want to go on a treasure hunt. Well, of course he will. If you're a pirate, you got to go hunting for treasure. And he'll find an old kite and want to make one himself. Look, he found an old kite. And so you'll have to get him some sticks and paper and string. I don't know if you've ever made a kite, but it's not easy. And when the kite is finished, he'll want to fly it and it will go higher and higher. Until it gets tangled in the apple tree. Uh-oh. 
and the tree will remind him of apple juice. And so he'll probably ask you for some. And chances are, if he wants some apple juice, he'll want a donut to go with it. <laughs> and that is, if you give a dog a donut, written by Laura Numeroff with illustrations by Felicia Brown. Excuse me, Felicia Bond. Sorry, Felicia. If you give a dog a donut. Well, the next song that I'm going to sing you is not about donuts, but it is about cookies. It goes like this. Five little cookies with frosting galore. I ate one, and now there are four. Four little cookies, tasty as can be. I ate a green one, and now there are three. Three little cookies, all fresh and new. I ate the blue one, and now there are two. Two little cookies, oh what fun. I ate the yellow one, and now there is one. One little cookie alone on a plate. You say to save it, but I say too late. Sorry, I told you, I ate all the cookies from the cookie jar. Well, I have one more story for you. And this is from Now We Are Six, A.A. A. Milne, with decorations by Ernest H. Shepard. And this is called Down by the Pond. I'm fishing. Don't talk, anybody. Don't come near. Can't you see? The fish might hear. He thinks I'm playing with a piece of string. He thinks I'm another sort of funny thing. But he doesn't know I'm fishing. He doesn't know I'm fishing. That what I'm doing, I'm fishing. Let me show you the picture. He's got his little string. No, I'm not. I'm newting. Don't cough, anybody. Don't come by. Any small noise makes a newt feel shy. He thinks I'm a bush or a new sort of tree. He thinks it's somebody but doesn't think it's me. And he doesn't know I'm newting. No, he doesn't know I'm newting. That's what I'm doing, newting. And there you have it. Well, it doesn't look like he ate any fish or caught a newt, but at least he had fun doing so. Well, you guys, I can't believe it, but it's already the end of story time. Sparky, this one went fast, didn't it? Everything goes fast for Sparky. Sparky is rather slow. That's because Sparky is a sloth. All right, well, let's say goodbye, shall we? And one of my dear friends joined me today who I haven't seen in a while. Hi, Maya. I'm so glad you're here today. Let's say goodbye, shall we? Goodbye, Helen. Goodbye, Danny. Goodbye, Lily. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, Shelby. And thank you. Goodbye, Ollie. Goodbye, Allie. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, Delilah. Goodbye, JC. Goodbye, Eli. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, Maya. Goodbye, Charlotte. Goodbye, Isabella. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, Gabriella. Goodbye, Lillian. Goodbye, Bella. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, Frangelica. Goodbye, Francine. Goodbye, Madeline. I'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. I will see you on Wednesday. And Wednesday, 
thanks to my friend Shelby who sent me books about cars. We are going to be reading stories about wheels. So it's going to be all wheels Wednesday. So join me for some fabulous wheeled vehicle stories on Wednesday. But you know what? It's time for our hugs. Come on over. Come on, Sparky. Let's give everybody a high five. Want to give them a high five? Here we go. There's a Sparky high five for you. And I'll give you a high five too. And Sparky, you give me one, I'll give you one. Very good. And now it's time for a hug, everybody, if you want one. So take one hand, put it on one shoulder. The other hand, put it on the other shoulder. And squeeze really, really tight. Ah, that's a hug from me and Sparky to you. And we will see you on Wednesday, won't we, Sparky? Say goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. See you on Wednesday. All Wheel Wednesday is just around the corner. Enjoy your Monday.